50,000 years ago, a group of humans did something insane. They built boats and sailed into an ocean where they couldn't see land. No maps, no compasses, no GPS. They didn't even know if there was land on the other side. They just went. And they made it, crossing 90 kilometers of open water, becoming the first ocean voyagers. In human history, this is how they did it. During the ice ages, sea levels dropped massively, 400 feet lower than today. This exposed land bridges everywhere. Siberia connected to Alaska. Southeast Asian islands connected to each other. You could walk from Thailand to Borneo. Humans used these bridges to spread across the world, but there was one place where no land bridge ever appeared between Southeast Asia and Australia. Scientists call this the Wallace Line. Even with sea levels 400 feet lower, the ocean here was still too deep. A trench thousands of feet down, no amount of ice age could expose it. Which means one thing. When archaeologists found human remains in Australia, dated to 65,000 years ago, they knew something incredible had happened because there's only one way humans got there. They crossed the ocean. At minimum, they had to cross 90 kilometers of open water. That's 56 miles. With Stone Age technology, in an ocean where one storm could kill everyone. So how did they do it? First, they needed boats, not canoes for rivers, not rafts for crossing streams, seaworthy vessels that could handle open ocean. We don't know exactly what they built. Wood doesn't survive 50,000 years, but we know what works in open ocean. Large bamboo rafts, log rafts lashed with vines, dug out canoes with outriggers for stability. Whatever they built had to stay afloat in waves, had to carry multiple people, had to hold supplies, water, food, tools, and had to be stable enough that one big wave wouldn't flip it. This required planning, abstract thinking. They had to imagine a journey that would take days, pack enough water for everyone, enough food, and accept they might never come back. Modern archaeologists have tried to recreate this using only Stone Age technology, bamboo rafts, stone tools, no modern materials, and they've succeeded which proves it was possible, but also shows how insanely difficult it was. Now comes the hardest part. Once you're in the middle of the ocean, how do you know which way to go? They used the stars. In the Southern Hemisphere, the Southern Cross points south. Other constellations rise in the east, set in the west. If you know the patterns, you can navigate, but this requires knowledge passed down through generations. Someone had to learn the stars, teach others, create a tradition of navigation. This wasn't accidental. This was sophisticated maritime culture. They also read the ocean itself. Currents flow in patterns. You can see them in how debris floats, how seaweed drifts, even the texture of the water, and birds. Seabirds fly out to feed, but return to land every night. If you see birds flying consistently in one direction, especially at sunset, that's where land is. Even clouds can tell you where land is. Clouds build over land, form differently over islands. If you see clouds staying in one place, not drifting with wind, there's land underneath. The first voyagers had to learn all of this. Stars for direction, currents for speed, Birds for proximity to land, clouds for confirmation. This is sophisticated navigation, 50,000 years ago. But here's what gets me. At some point during that journey, you'd look back and the land you left would be gone. Below the horizon, and you still wouldn't see land ahead. You'd be surrounded by ocean in every direction, nothing but water and sky, and you'd have to keep going because turning back isn't safer. One storm could end everything. Waves could swamp the boat. Wind could blow you off course. You could run out of water, run out of food, die of exposure. 
every single one of these journeys was life or death. And yet, they succeeded multiple times because Australia wasn't colonized by one boat. It took multiple voyages, multiple groups over thousands of years. When they finally saw land, they discovered an entire continent, a landmass that had never seen humans, animals that had never encountered people, plants no one had ever touched. They were the first. Aboriginal Australians preserve stories of these journeys, oral traditions going back tens of thousands of years, stories of crossing the great water, of following the stars, of ancestors who risked everything and found a new world. Their descendants have lived in Australia for 65,000 years, the oldest continuous culture on Earth. All because someone, 50,000 years ago, built a boat and sailed into the unknown. We celebrate Polynesian navigators, Viking explorers, Columbus crossing the Atlantic, but this voyage came first by 40,000 years. And in some ways, it was more impressive because those later explorers knew land existed somewhere. The first voyagers to Australia, they had no idea, they just hoped. Think about that. Getting in a boat with your family, your children, and sailing beyond sight of land into an ocean that might be endless. Trusting your navigation, trusting your boat, trusting your courage. That's not just exploration. That's faith in humanity's ability to figure things out. 50,000 years later, we've sent people to the moon, probes to the edge of the solar system. But it all started here, with people who looked at an ocean and decided to cross it. Not because they knew what was on the other side, but because they dared to find out. That's the most human thing we've ever done. 